Well, the year has not been off to a great start for me in my raised garden beds. This is a giant zinnia. Look at that. It's just tiny, tiny. And here are our other pepper plants. They look like I've just planted them. And of course, they've been in the ground over two months. Even with all of the challenges that I'm experiencing, this is the first year I've had limelight hydrangeas, roses still in bloom. These are Marguerite David Austin roses. Look at this pretty petunia. This is a wave petunia started from seed. Stargazer lily is in bloom. They smell incredible. Hi there, this is Channing from Harvesting Heritage and welcome to my July raised garden tour. Well, the year has not been off to a great start for me in my raised garden beds. These are were installed a year ago and you would think that with only a year the soil would be fantastic uh, and that I'd be growing in abundance. But I find myself at the end of July still with no tomatoes not even a chance of a cucumber coming and everything just looking really anemic. Now I thought that it might be related to bug pressure, maybe not enough water, there was a lot of yellowing and so I um, was adding more water but then thinking maybe I was overwatering, and I finally gave up and said this has to be really wrong to be creating some of the results. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now coming up to the raised beds, this is where you'll see, I thought I was having a lot of just bug pressure that was maybe causing the issue. Uh, I've sprayed BT for the cabbage moths. I might get a couple of cabbages, but this entire bed needed to be pulled out um, they started to look like this. It's so late for cabbage here because we are starting to warm up, uh, but I've left it in because they weren't growing to size. Here's some scarlet runner beans. And again, you can just tell the yellowness. So some of our older leaves are very, very yellow, but the new growth is starting to look better because now we're fertilizing, of course. I actually got a my soil test just ordered it on Amazon we'll link it for you um, so that you can take a look and those results have come in and boy did I learn a lot turns out I have a massive uh, nitrogen deficiency in my soil so I want to um, just put up on the screen and kind of show you what it is that the report came back as um, every other micronutrient and, and major nutrient I have in my soil, I just don't have nitrogen. That going forward, we are going to uh, every spring test our soil. What I did wrong was I put compost on and you would never think that you wouldn't want to put compost, but compost can have a lot of wood chips in the soil and when wood chips decompose it actually leaches out the nitrogen to help all of that soil decompose um, so that's why when you look at my soil test i have really high everything else every other micronutrient and, and major nutrient i have in my soil i just don't have nitrogen here's that compost that you, i thought i was doing something really good for our soil but look at all of that wood chips now over time of course that's going to feed the soil and make it really rich but for this year it did not have the intended results i've got more lettuce that i've just planted in some watermelon maybe i'll get and then i think the most worrisome area for us has been our peppers 
These are actually large pepper plants for us. These are shishitos um, this year. Typically, my peppers by the end of July would almost be the size of these tomato plants. They would be totally bushed out, deep, deep, deep green color. Here's the tomatoes and this telltale sign of nitrogen deficiency in tomatoes is not necessarily that they are really yellow because you'll notice this is not totally a yellow plant, but they grow very long and leggy uh, and then don't flower much. So oh, I might get a tomato soon. Some Swiss chard. Egyptian walking onions, basil. I do have a giant kohlrabi coming. I've had a, eaten a couple of those and they've been wonderful. You can see the bug pressure again. We've been spraying. Now in my family, Swiss chard, kale, they're not our favorite things. I actually grow it for the chickens and honestly, the chickens like the bugs on them. So I don't, I use it kind of as a host plant such that bugs can eat that and they leave the other stuff that I do like alone. Now here is what I'm talking about. This is a cucumber that was planted probably six weeks ago from seed and it just totally stunts their growth. I'm still picking on broccoli so the main heads of most of these have come off and I'm just getting additional side shoots. More tomatoes, cucumbers. You can also tell, if you can see that, that it's green with some veining of yellow, that's nitrogen deficiency really clearly. This is a zucchini that was planted over two months ago and it just kind of sits there. This new green leaf is since we've added the blood mill so just really funny issues. Even <laughs> this is a giant zinnia. Look at that. It's just tiny, tiny. So you learn something every single year. Now let me show you what we're using to solve the nitrogen deficiency problem. Up on the screen, I'll show first the blood meal that we're using from Espoma. I've already gone through four bags of it for these raised beds, so I don't have an example to show you. Then once a week, we're switching between this miracle Grow Performance Organics Edible Water Soluble Fertilizer or the Agro Thrive. And I think you could really choose any liquid organic um, and that would be fine. The reason we're, we've elected to use the miracle Grow is because you can use this hose adapter garden feeder and it makes it really easy to just spray the garden and then the agro thrive it just has a little bit of different mix of nutrients uh, but we do have to use watering cans for it this seems to be making a difference we're gonna continue on a weekly schedule just to try to save our soil fountain is looking really good the greenhouse is clean I am finally getting some zucchini from this plant, it seems to have had enough nutrients. Pretty frizzle, Cosmo. You see these zucchinis next to this one are itty bitty too. The carrot bed still is just frozen in time. We can start harvesting as needed. Here's a butternut squash, a, a honey nut squash. So a smaller butternut that um, Sean really wants to see if we can have it grow over our trellises. Tomatillos are starting to fruit. You can see though that they are nitrogen deficient as well. Let's see if I can get a good picture of that for you. I'm gonna show you this queen of Monaco tomatillo is so interesting. It's long and yellow. And these actually are super sweet 
and they're delicious just as a snacking um, tomatillo. It tastes like a fruity tomato, um, maybe a little more firm and less juicy, um, but that, that's a wonderful thing to have in the garden. Some more tomatoes coming on pretty late in the season. I have some gourds that have come up for Halloween. Our strawberry bed is still producing like crazy. I'm getting bowls of strawberries and I think the reason why the strawberries are still really delicious uh, is because I couldn't, they're perennial, they come back every year for us and I couldn't top dress them with a lot of the compost. So because it didn't get compost, I guess the nutrients did not get leached out as the compost was growing, um, decomposing. Oh no. Do you guys know what this is? That's bindweed. I do not want bindweed in this raised bed. No, no, no. Get rid of that. So you can come out and harvest some strawberries. They're looking really good. And these longer beds, we have corn. Again, they're starting to tassel at only two feet tall. So corn is a heavy feeder of nitrogen. You guessed it. We've done a second planting of corn and it started to come up. Um, some sunflowers, Let me get out of the... And these are giant pumpkins. We have a little gopher situation there. This clematis is looking gorgeous. The onion bed, of course, they're huge nitrogen feeders, so they have not done anything in three months. This area, I have some bigger onions, and I really believe it's because this was fully planted in potatoes last year, and this stayed pretty empty with only a couple of squash plants, one, two, three, squash pants so I think there was a lot more nitrogen available for these onions versus those and then here we have some winter squash I, I have delicata uh, and spaghetti squash I believe in there there you have it a end of July garden tour of my raised beds also we talked about uh, soil health. I, um, I hope that you take a look at having your own soil tested. We'll leave a link again below. Uh, I used my soil test and it was so informative about what is happening, kind of the unseen beneath the ground health of my soil. And I think it's going to make a big difference because I can really trigger the actual issues and get this garden back into shape. Even though through all the challenges, there are a few beautiful things that are happening in my garden, this clematis being one of them, the hydrangeas that are in bloom, my strawberry patch is fabulous. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of the highs and lows of gardening. All of it is fun in the end to me. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing, press that like button and share it on your social media. And until next time, I hope you have a joy-filled day.